Howdy folks, Jake here with the Banjo Bend General Store. And for this week's tech tip, we're gonna talk about a very simple topic, which is how to adjust the height of a traditional mandolin bridge. Now a mandolin, like a lot of other instruments, has what I call a floating, uh, floating bridge design, which means the bridge is just held in place by downward pressure of the strings. Uh, banjo is the same way. Uh, the violin or fiddle family is the same way, as is a lot of archtop guitars. So um, on the mandolin, though, what is a traditional design is that you have these little uh, thumb screws, or wheels, we'll call them, uh, where the saddle piece of the mandolin sets up on those wheels. You see that? And so by raising or lowering these wheels, we can essentially adjust the action of the mandolin. Um, and the reason for this is to get the strings closer. If, if, if you can see on this one, I haven't set it up yet. Those strings are pretty high, the way it come from the factory. I mean, you could almost fly a plane under those strings. <laughs> so the, the first step in uh, getting those down where they need to be, it's actually kind of a... Uh, a balancing act between achieving the proper neck angle with the truss rod and then also getting the, uh, the, the wheels set where they need to be. So in this case, uh, I'm going to show you just as far as the, the saddle on the bridge goes. Also, uh, before moving on and doing that, uh, we want to mention that you want to get the intonation basically set uh, before you adjust these, which means... You want the distance from the nut to the 12th fret to equal that from the 12th fret to the bridge. And you can tell it's it's good or pretty close by doing a, a chime or hitting a harmonic on the 12th fret and then noting it at the same fret. And you should achieve the same note, roughly. Like I said, we're not being super particular about that for this uh, demonstration, but you would want to be uh, pretty close because where you move it on the top will it raise and lower the strings too, you know, because it's an arch top on the mandolin. So if it's sitting uh, farther back or closer to the strings, that changes the pitch and the, the height of the strings that, that way. But anyway, there's a couple different methods. Um, if you're lowering the action, you can actually do this under tension. There's no reason to, to loosen the strings because we're actually going to lower the tension by lowering the saddle piece. If you're raising it, I do suggest... Um, detuning the mandolin uh, to, to raise the saddle piece. Otherwise, you're increasing the tension as you raise it, and it can just, it can cause all kinds of things. I've seen guys do that under tension, and uh, the saddle piece literally split, and it breaks apart. So we don't want any of that. You can use either a pair of needle nose pliers for this. Uh, sometimes you can use your fingers if, uh, if the wheels are, are machined well enough. On, on higher end mandolins are typically easier than on these lower end ones. And uh, what I like to use is just a little pair of end cutters like this. Little end nippers. And so to lower the action, I just put them on the wheel there. And then you're going to want to screw those in or down. If you were looking at the top of the mandolin like this, both of these wheels want to go clockwise to get the action down where we want it. Okay, folks, so we're back. Sorry about that, I had a little interruption there. <laughs> um, anyway, I've got these both uh, screwed down. You can kind of see where they're at now. Um, and like I said, the purpose of lowering the saddle piece, I've got them almost all the way down, but not quite, which if you look up on the neck here, you can see it gets our strings closer to where they ought to be. Um, the remainder of that will just be by probably a neck adjustment because it's got quite a bit more relief in it this way than it needs to have. So we'll kind of um, get that ironed out and she should be good to go uh, apart from that. So um, if you have the opposite problem, like if your strings are too low and they're buzzing and you need to um, create a little more clearance from one fret to the other, uh, obviously check the neck first and make sure it's not bowed over backwards. You do want just a little bit of relief this way with the truss rod, which I'm digressing. That's a separate topic altogether. But if, if that's not the case, if we just need to raise these, like I was saying before, detune the mandolin just a bit and turn the wheels counterclockwise and that will slowly lift your saddle piece, which should uh, clear up any fret buzzes that you might have if that's the case. 
So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, like always, we appreciate you folks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. Thanks a bunch.